Well, I found a limitation of putting the colors down to 8-bit. We notice the machine's still ripping right along. The toolpath update is still moving, but our DROs just stopped. They just stopped. And if I go over here and I try to go to a different screen, weird, weird stuff happens. So let's just go ahead and stop that. I'll end this session. Right click, go to properties, compatibility. Instead of 8 bit, 256 colors, go to 16 bit, apply OK. <clears throat> Everything looks a little better. So I'm going to, I ran this yesterday. This is the next day. And it ran fine on this setting everything worked great so i'm gonna go ahead and do some more testing so this is going to be the end of this saga here so i went ahead hooked this guy back up and did a little bit of testing between the two this thing still works great works wonderful but for the price this thing hands down is the winner of this I'm not going to say contest but the showdown between the two I did find the bio setting on this that allows me to just turn power on and once it gets power it just boots up so you never have to actually touch it so that would actually be great to just stick back behind the monitor or whatever your your setup is um, let's see so, I went and did a little bit of research on these two. So, the Latte Panda is a 1920 boost, uh, 1920 megahertz, so 1.9 gigahertz boosted processor. And it's a 5 volt system, which was pretty awesome that you could run it off of one of the little wall chargers if you had a good enough wall charger for your phone. And it has the Atom X5Z8350 CPU. The Panda's only got 4 gig of RAM and 64 gigs of storage space. It does have an SD card slot, which I was kind of disappointed that the little Fire Stick, or not Fire Stick, but the little PC Stick did not have. The other benefit to the Latte Panda is it's got three USB ports. It's got two USB 1.0s or 2.0s and one 3.0. Uh, just with turning it on, it booted up to desktop in 26 seconds. Now the PC stick, it's a 12 volt system, but it comes with a power supply. Whereas the Panda does not. You have to figure that out yourself. The CPU, it has is a 2.6 gigahertz it's a 2 gigahertz processor and it boosts up to 2.6 2.595 is what I physically saw while running testing on it and it's a Celeron J4125 and it's also a 4 core just like that one but the clock speeds on the Celeron are much faster than the Latte Panda the stick has also got 6 gig of RAM, which comes in handy. For Mach 3, it doesn't matter. I've never seen it over uh, 1.9 gigs of RAM usage. And it comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. It's only got two USB ports that are 3.0. And the boot time on it was 27 seconds. So it could have been a difference of me just pressing the button. So they're comparable. The other good thing about the stick is I'm able to use a solid state drive on the 3.0 port as expanded storage whereas the Panda had the micro SD card but would not support either an unpowered or a powered SSD and this also allows you to copy your file straight to this walk over and plug it in or like I have it here, I've got it going to a little USB hub. That's where my mouse and keyboard receiver is plugged into. 
for the money the stick has is more has more performance and more capabilities not just Mach 3 obviously I'm centering around Mach 3 because that's what I do but it's just got more performance hands down than the Latte Panda and it's cheaper granted I think somewhere in one of these clips the Latte Panda was not designed for just a regular PC use case scenario as it's got the Arduino and a bunch of imports and inputs and outputs so it's designed for something totally different, but it works great for Mach 3. I ran a lot a lot of large files through it, and never once did the machine hiccup. It's just for the money. The Latte Panda board itself is comparable in price to this entire stick, and then you have to get the cooling fan so you can moderate the temperatures in this case just so nothing falls on it and it's in a case whereas this thing right out of the box you don't have to do anything and you also have to source a power supply for the panda i'm not knocking the panda i like it i like it a lot and it's going to go on one of my other machines as the controller but for the money if you're looking for something new you don't want to go with used hardware this little fire stick and obviously like i said you have to get the one with the RJ45 jack because that's what my controller interface is with. If your controller interface is with USB, great. You can get a different one and they even come a little bit cheaper. So hands down, the little fire stick is the winner. It's a great performer. It's small. It's compact. Right out of the box, it's almost ready to use. You just got to clean up Windows, install Mach 3. If you're using... A certain type of plug-in for your electronics then you have to get that software and possibly the .NET framework 2.0 easy as pie oh and this has also got Wi-Fi built into it so is this anyway there you go I'm gonna look at probably getting over time about three or four more of these so I can get rid of these big bulky boxes